<sighs> so, I've been putting off this video for like two months now. And I haven't posted anything new in a while besides for the festival stuff. So anyways, we're gonna talk about how to get into low light DJ slash concert photography. Roll the montage. something I do for a living and it's actually how I got into photography well not quite I started with doing cars and then my friend was like hey I need a photographer for an event could you do some DJ photography for me and I had no idea what I was doing I came in with a Canon 70D the first tip I want to give you is that your camera does not matter unless you're using like a rebel if you're using a rebel just just don't 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 use a rebel please um, 70 d is what i had uh, to start with and you can see with the photos it looks good um but what you'll find out of this video is that your equipment isn't so much the limiter uh your equipment will make it easier and will allow you to capture more moments and miss less but something i do want to preface before we continue is you need to know what your iso is your aperture and your f-stop as long as you know how to control those things this video should be able to help you become a better photographer in low light situations, especially with fast movement. So tip number one, going back to my Canon 70D, know your camera's limits. So what do I mean by know your camera's limits? I know that my EOS R6, I can have my ISO go up to about 12,800 before it starts to get so grainy that I don't like to use photos. So I know my limit on my ISO is 12,800. So what can I do with the information? I can set my ISO to auto. Oh my God, you use auto ISO, the whole world's going to explode. People are going to lose. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I'm literally photographing the chain smokers and G-Eazy in like a month. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. So with auto ISO, it's going to automatically adjust to the light. You're like, well, it's gonna be grainy. No, because I know my limits. I know that if I make it so it does not go above 12,800, all those photos will be usable. Now, if the lighting does not change, but in DJ situations, there's usually flashing lights and the lights are going up and down, and it's, it's kind of hard to adjust the ISO like constantly to match those lights, which is why I use auto, but, if the lights are not changing and they stay consistent lighting, then you don't need to set it to auto. You can just pick a good setting and leave it at that. So how does this work for like a lower quality camera like the Canon 70D? I knew that my ISO limit was like 2000-ish, 2500, somewhere in that range. So I would never let my ISO go above that. Now, does that mean I miss more shots? Yes. You know, I had to wait for the perfect lighting conditions to grab my photos. Um, I couldn't get photos in quite as dark scenarios, but it's still possible. And you can see these photos, they look great with the Canon 70D. And with the EOS R, I usually stuck around 10,000. So knowing the limits of your camera is good and working within those limits. So this gives me, this brings me down to tip number two, is if you have a camera that's not good in low light, have a good low light lens. So when I first started off with the 70D, I also started off with the 50 millimeter f 1.8. It's only a $125 lens, and if you get the RF version, like let's say you have a you know a mirrorless lens from Canon, you can get the RF for like 200 bucks, and it's not a bad first lens whatsoever. Or you can use what I'm currently using right now is I have the RF 35 millimeter uh, 1.8, which was like four or 500 bucks. Now, why do I recommend these lenses that are so cheap? They're really good in low light. F 1.8 is awesome for doing low light photography. You don't get this nice blur behind you like I do right now because my kitchen is messy and it's a whole other story. So I'm blurring it out with, you know, the low, with the low F stop, low aperture. So why is this important? Because if there is bad quality lighting or, 
you know, the lights are flashing and stuff like that, having a lower aperture will mean that you can capture more light. Your lens will be more wide open and it's gonna let more light in, which is going to give you a better photo. Now, if you have like a kit lens and it's like, you know, like an F4 or 5.6, that's not going to be good for low light. I highly suggest going out with the, uh, going out and getting a 50 millimeter. It's a great first lens. I used it for like two or three months when I first started doing DJ photography. I even still use it to this day because of how good it is with low light. Now, if you have the money, you can go down to like an f you know 1.2, but you got to keep in mind with f 1.2. If you focus on like, let's say they're wearing a hat, right? And you focus on the front of the hat, their face is gonna be a little bit blurred because it has such a shallow depth of field. So you have to really make sure that you like, focus on like their eyeball because it's gonna blur around that area. So the F1.8 is a good compromise. Now, um, let's say you want something a little bit different. Let's say the lighting quality is a little bit better. You can do like a 24 to 70 F2.8 or like I like to use, is the 70 to 200. This is a phenomenal lens. I use it all the time at big festivals because I can be further away and I can zoom in and capture stuff. So the F2.8 is really good when you have decent lighting and it's not like crazy dark. So I highly suggest getting one of these. You will love it. It's such a good lens. I use it all the time. I'd say this is either my number one or number two most used lens in my bag. So having a good lens is super important and you don't have to break the bank. $50, not $50, $125, 50 millimeter. Perfect. Don't need to break the bank. So tip number three will be no kind of like the environment that you're shooting in. So I shoot at the same location all the time. And I know there's certain lights up on the ceiling. And if I get my person that I'm shooting in front of those lights where like their head, like here's their head and here's the light. Like my hand right here to circle, that's the light. If I focus it right around that area, it creates a nice little glow around their head. So I do that a lot with my photography where I will put the lights from the stage just behind the artist, which will give a nice glowing effect and you get something super cool like this. And this photo was actually featured in DJ Times Magazine. Super cool, I was really excited when that happened. Blew my mind. Um, but when their Instagram like shared it, I was like, wow, that's so cool. But you want to get uh, flattering poses and everything. So this isn't, tip number three isn't just knowing your environment, but it's also knowing um, when to take the photos. A lot of times people just walk up and the DJ is just, doing her thing and they'll snap photos and yeah, it can look good. You know, like I have some photos where people are looking down and they look nice, like say the least, uh, but they're nothing special. You want to get dynamic shots where, you know, they're either like they're throwing their hands up in the air or they're doing some, they're jumping or, you know, just doing something crazy. You really want to know those moments. And I think it's important at that part. So this is kind of like a three in one part of three tip know the environment, so that way you know where the lights are and where to get the best angles and shots. Uh, know the artist and what type of artist they are. And then part three of this is all kind of come together is know the music a little bit. So with EDM, there's usually a drop. And there's usually a buildup. Right and when it gets this buildup and then the drop hits, usually when that drop happens is when they will do something. So they'll hit the drop and then they'll throw their hands up. They'll dance, they'll jump. do something and that's like a really important spot to grab photos some of my best photos are from when the drop hits so make sure that your camera is ready when that drop is about to happen tip number four is so this kind of plays into the last one um, oh with knowing I was like do 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 my brain was kind of like not knowing what I was doing for a second is so if you have really active artists 
or really stable artists. So whether they move a lot or don't move a lot. If I have an artist who jumps around all the time, yes, I'm talking about you, Jake, Iggy, Ronan, uh, Goomba, all of you, they jump around a lot. So I want to have my ice, not my ISO, I want my shutter speed to be at something around like 350 because I want to capture that motion. And sometimes if the lighting is good enough, I'll go like above 400 to make it really crispy. But then if I have artists who don't move very much and they just kind of like stand there and they're just doing their thing and they just want some photos, but they're not really big action people, I will do something like a uh, 150 to 200 range. And you kind of got to take that with a grain of salt because I'm using a EOS R6. So with my R6, I have in-body stabilization. So it's okay if I go down just a little bit into like the 150 sometimes, but with my Canon 70D, I never want to like below 200. If I want below 200, it'd be blurry. So I can do a 150 with this camera and it's completely fine. So kind of know your camera, it comes back to you know tip number one, knowing your camera, know what you can go down to if you can do a 150 shutter speed for a slower, less moving artist, or if the lighting is good enough and you have a good enough lens and good enough lighting situation and all that, if you can go up to like a 350 shutter speed. But just know if you increase your shutter speed, it's going to get darker, which means you have to have a lower f-stop, lower, I mean, higher ISO and better lighting. So all those things come into play and you really have to work with all those things together. So you want low f-stop, the lowest shutter speed you can get without your artist being blurry. You don't want them to be blurry, you want them to be sharp. And the lowest ISO you can go without it getting noisy. And you know, tip number five, it's a really simple one, nothing too crazy. Um, just have fun. Uh, <laughs> that sounds ridiculous, how is having fun make you a better photographer? Uh, if you go to a show and you're just like, oh yeah, I got my camera, I'm in the corner. And you're just kind of like shy and you know, you're not confident. Uh, it's gonna really show in your photos. And you'll see, you know, like in my photos from when I first started to where I'm at now and how much more dynamic they are now. I'm not afraid to get up on stage with the artist. I'm not afraid to get in the crowd up to the front and get right in front of the artist. You know, my confidence is much higher now and this really goes with anything you do in life. You know, you want to have confidence in what you do because it will always make you better. I have a friend who dances a lot and he always tells his students, you need to be confident because if you're not confident, your moves aren't gonna look good. You know, your dance flows are gonna be kind of like, you're hesitating. You don't wanna hesitate. Just go full in, have fun with it, have a good time. Some of the best friends I've ever had, I met through DJ photography. And the reason that people always come back and hire me over the other people in the area, because there is some other people in the area who do photography for DJs and concerts, and don't get me wrong, they're very good. But the reason I get hired is I have a persona about me. When I show up, I get on stage with the artist, I have a good time, I interact with the crowd, I talk with people, like, hey, have a drink with us, I'll have a drink. You know, you, if you don't drink, don't drink. I'm just saying, I, I have drinks, you know, and stuff. But make sure you just like, you interact with them, have a good time, be like, yo, that was sick, you know, good job, you know? And they'll love that. They'll see you as a friend and they'll want to bring you back. Some of my best friends are DJs, AC turned on. So I'm gonna finish up this video. Anyways, have fun with it because having fun will show in your work and that's important. You want your photos to look good and if you're shy and you're hiding in a corner trying to get photos, they're not gonna be as good as if you're confident and just get up on stage and get like right up in there and get these cool shots. So all that being said, thank you guys for watching. Um, I didn't put out many videos because with the move and everything, there's so much going on. But I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see more, please hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. It means a lot to me. This is what I do for a living. Photography is my life. I'm more than happy to give any tips out that you want and uh, subscribe to see more. Otherwise, follow me everywhere, Nick underscore Van Loon, or just type in Nick Van Loon. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. You can find me all over the place by searching my name. I do have two weddings this month I'm doing. I have um, a festival at Breakaway in Grand Rapids. I'll be on stage with Elenium. 
uh, I'll be doing a styling disco, so stay tuned for that. And then in October, it's a really big one, October 1st, I'm gonna be on stage with the Chainsmokers and g Easy. I'm gonna be getting some backstage footage, I'm gonna be getting all kinds of stuff for that. So if you want, if you want to see that, stay tuned. Follow my TikTok and my Instagram if you want to see the behind the scenes footage. Otherwise, look for a big video coming on here on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I don't know how to end these videos. I've just been so busy with moving. Gonna be going to Austin, Texas here in like a month or two. And it's just so much. So uh, peace out, have a good one, and I'll see you later. Do the Peter McKinnon thing. And then you turn it off afterwards. You don't, act, you don't actually like, end the video with the, you just end it afterwards because it's funnier, yeah.